Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Hi. Doug recently got the chance to spend some time with Celeste, which is, yep. according to pretty much everyone else, like the greatest game ever made if you follow Metacritic or OpenCritic or things like that. Yeah, yeah. So what is it that's putting this game above everything else, I guess, to start with? Because I'm sure there's got to be mm -hmm. a lot to it if it's getting all these 10 out of 10s and all this kind of stuff. So what's... What's so good about this? I think simply put, it's it's super Meat Boy, but just much better. And I, I think I think just if you just kind of take it from like that, just that in and of itself, just like just gameplay wise, it's better than Super Meat Boy. It's in the similar vein and it does everything Super Meat Boy did, but better. So that's kind of like your baseline. That's before like I talk about anything other the other things it adds and makes Celeste Celeste unique. I think that's just it. It's just really, I think just the very, very basic platforming is super 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 well done and it's just like a really tight game um and i think it took sort of a formula that i think a lot of people try to do which is like super hard platformer that you restart a lot and then does it with just such a well just it does it so well done it's it's it feels it, i mean there's some there's like i think there's like one point in the entire game where i was like okay this is a little too hard everything else just feels it has a perfect balance of like challenging but not hard um and then on top of that, it has all its like really, really awesome charm and stuff that like I think is usually not with really difficult games. Yeah, most of them are just kind of like, you're playing this because you're going to get pissed off and you're going to like that. So we're just going to leave it there. So is it, yeah. is it like individual level kind of like Super Meat Boy is? Or is it more like a progression through? Because isn't it something like you're climbing a mountain or something like that? Isn't that the gist of it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the basic concept of the game is that you are you are quote unquote climbing a mountain and how this sort of broken down by levels is you have a level with a certain theme and i'm gonna and it's not open world but the levels are a little bit more open than super meat boy something like if, imagine if you took all the levels from super meat boy and just tied them instead of going for to like blo like going out to a world map and then going back into a, like a single yeah. screen level you just have a bunch of single screen levels kind of tied together okay and some and sometimes they split off so sometimes it'll be in one screen you'll see like okay there's three exits i can go to i'll go to this exit and you can come back it's not super exploration-y but i mean but sometimes it does split off and sometimes it's usually just like kind of like a bonus room you can do or and that's that's pretty much the extent of it or like Sometimes like there'll be like a wall that's like, is that breakable? It's like, okay, now I broke through that wall and now here's sort of like a bonus challenge. And then I get a, a cool collectible with that. Nice. Um, so, so it does, it does feel, I think much more that you are like going on an adventure as opposed to um, Super Meat Boy where it feels like you are just playing like singular levels. Yeah. I think, I think on top of that, just, just that whole, I think one of the things you had said earlier, it's like with, um, like, oh, the difficulty of the game, it's like, oh, we're, I, I, I think that, I think a difficult games. Um, I think the most important thing about Celeste is the tone that it that it places besides just being a difficult game. I think difficult games in general try to set a, in more recent years, a tone of being hardcore or they set the story as being like this very dreary thing that's very difficult. So I'm thinking like Souls, yep. it's very, very dreary, very difficult. It's going to be hardship. Or like something like Super Meat Boy where it's like um, really punk rock, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's, it's got like an attitude to it sort of thing of like, um, it's violent, it's like visceral and it's, it's like, they got like fart jokes and stuff and they like, all the references are like Castlevania and like games that your, your little brother probably hasn't played, but we know you have sort of thing. But this game is actually like super, super welcoming, um, even though it knows it's a really hard game. And it basically makes the whole story to be about this like girl, woman, I can't really tell how old she is. I think she's probably like in her early 20s traveling up the mountain because something happened. But the whole game is like very encouraging. And the whole story is set with her, like people encouraging her to keep going. Um, <laughs> so, so like you, so you meet like you die. Yeah. Good, good effort. You give that another shot and you'll get there. Yeah, no, exactly. It's it's like that. Um, and like the over, if like the, if you really want to get in the story, it's like her dealing with her mental, like her her depression. Oh, it's a story which is really strange because um, I guess we're gonna get like really into story. Um, when you go to the mountain, there's like a magical aspect to it, and what happens is part of her her depression breaks off into like another self. Okay. Um, so there's a so the, there's a sort of antagonistic doppelganger like, throughout like, the like game. Like the like shadow villain you always fight in a game, like dark, dark me, shadow me, like 
Yeah. Oh, it's, it, it, it is that. Okay. And then the, the whole thing is like she has all of her negative characteristics, like being angry and sad and that sort of thing. And so that's sort of the antagonist. Um, while there's like a bunch of characters along the way who like you just sit down and talk to and like the, it, it sounds really kind of like cheesy, um, but it's so, so, so weirdly well done um, that I think that like on top of like this really excellent base of gameplay that's like, like harkens back to Super Meat Boy and stuff, it now has this whole new tone that makes it feel new and it also doesn't feel nearly as discouraging as those other games because it's not such a dreary atmosphere you have to enter in order to play it. Mm -hmm. It's one that's very encouraging and one that is like actually has like really fu like sort of funny characters and interesting characters doing interesting things. So with all that being said, then the story like are these cutscenes are these like just dialogue options are you just like at the end of a level somebody says something because this seems like a fairly involved platformer or fairly involved story for one of these kind of 2d side scrolling platformers which like you mentioned before sweet super meat boys basically it's like oh yeah, yeah go get them well it, um i mean they kind of have like they have like cutscenes. they're not cutscenes. it's basically like you'll go through a few sections of level and like there'll be a character there and then you have like two or three you know like 30 seconds of dialogue back and forth and you keep going and then like there's like a boss fight and then there's like some dialogue after that sort of thing like undertale like that kind of dialogue thing where it's just kind of like you play a little bit you talk someone wait sorry what do you mean like in that way like i guess i guess i'm trying to picture how like you get super meat boy and then i'm almost picturing like super heavy like rpg-esque story dialogue no, it's more like it's more like if me and you were talking like blah 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 blah. It's more like Banjo Kazooie, honestly. They speak like Banjo Kazooie. Oh, okay. It's more like that, like that sort of level of like think of like those sort of adventure. Think of like three D platformers. Yeah. Like you have conversations with characters, but they're not like involved. I guess I guess in my mind, it's just maybe it's just because I don't feel like any of those games have gone to that depth of a story, and I think maybe that's where I'm just yeah. getting the disconnect. Where like the Banjo Kazooie, like blah, 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 is like that guy stole my pages or honeycombs or whatever it was. Yeah, but instead replace they replace my you know whatever with, with I know what you're, I know exactly what you're saying instead of like replace but it just replace that dialogue with like some something like halfway interesting and meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's really cool in the game. Like the de game definitely acknowledges like certain parts you just played are hard, and then like so while it might not make sense for like a story perspective to put something in there, like the character might go like, oh wow, it that was a difficult section sort of thing, and they might meet that'd be like that's the time where they sort of put in those story sections it's not like very clear like okay this is the midway point for this world this is where we have a story plot oh, okay. it's usually after something very difficult so it gives you time to cool down gotcha um essentially so it has like these neat story aspects that are sort of placed to like cool cool down um and they're really neat i don't know it's like every time i was kind of excited um i'm trying to think of like there's some games i've played where it's like okay this is the talking section this part sucks <laughs> just, okay click 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 um but in this one, like, it's like you actually, I was like actually paying attention and I was like, oh, I'm surprised. This is something I would normally make fun of. Like, we're gonna have a really good story in a 2D platformer. But in this one, it like kind of makes sense huh. <laughs> um, to contextualize everything. Um, it's really pretty and the soundtrack is also super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess to kind of circle back around to where we started, we don't really do review scores, but 10 no. out of 10s, all that kind of stuff, like super high yeah. 90s justified or not um i could see like if um if you were a reviewer i could definitely see yeah sure absolutely like i, I like i said like you're starting at super meat boy and it does everything super meat boy did but better um me personally i'm not i mean i always put like 3d action adventure games ahead of pretty much well, yeah. everything just because that's the style of game i like but i can see i i when i when i played it um i was very hesitant saying it's like okay let's see how good you are celeste and by the end i was like that was a damn good game um hmm. and i i think i think we've we've talked i don't know if we've ever talked like like on the on the sort of youtube channel stuff um about how i don't finish a lot of games like this game like enraptured me over like two or three days and i felt like it kind of ended when it needed to and the story like had like a really satisfying conclusion the challenge is really satisfying um and i would have a hard time giving this like there's no faults to it you know what i mean yeah it's just like the purest essence of the thing it is so like I couldn't say oh they should have improved they should have improved this they should improve that it's like no this is like pretty much the best thing this thing could have been, um, and you're just saying your hesitation with the ten out of tens thing is this isn't your thing, this thing in particular has done pretty damn well for its thing but it's just not your thing. Yeah, I mean like I mean like horizon like I can't I can't put I can't put those in the same bucket as Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. 
um, does just like me. Like I have them sort of like categorized. It's like this is like a short film to me. Like if I was thinking like <laughs> cinema wise, like this is like a short film. Like is a short film better than the Godfather part? Like, you know, Godfather. It's like well, I mean they're like different. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I mean, I could, I don't, I don't think the reviews were like overblowing how good this game is. Mm. Um, I, I just like, there was no part of it that I was like, no, there's like one world I didn't like. <laughs> I'll say that, but that's probably just personal preference more than yeah, anything I mean, else. There's always going to be something you don't like as much as the rest, but yeah, exactly. And I don't, it was like the first time, like, and I don't notice music in games, but the music in this was like freaking awesome. It was so, so good. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we are, wait, you played this on the switch, right? Yeah, I play this on the Switch. I was going to the airport, so that's when I buy Switch games. <laughs> <laughs> my Switch collects dust unless I'm traveling. <laughs> I guess my question was going to be, did you play it on the TV or on the portable thing? Because I do think I do feel like that makes like a weird difference. I'm slowly noticing with Switch if I'm playing on the TV or not. But that answers that question. Yeah. But anyway. No, no, no. I no, I think that's a good point. I mean, it's like I, I play, I like playing 2D games on handheld. I think they work much better on a handheld. Yeah. Um, cause you don't have the expe- expectations of a game that goes on the TV. Exactly. And I've noticed, <laughs> I've noticed that <laughs> over the past like few months is that I have a very different opinion of a switch game, depending on what I'm playing it on and what type it is. Cause like you'll either be hearing our golf story review shortly or just prior to this. And I had the same yeah. feeling with that where I played it on the TV and it was kind of disappointing, but playing it on my handheld was super good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean that, that's a whole other conversation out of itself, and I, I think it's just the the start and stop aspect of the and that's I think this game it feels like it was built for handheld. Like this feels like a lot of Vita games I really love, yeah, um, like Muramasa and stuff where they're they're sort of repetitive, but that loop is really really fun for short bursts. Yep, and it, this has like that perfect short burst loop um, to it. So yeah, I wouldn't. I, I mean, I, but then again, I play like ninety nine percent of the time of my Switch on handheld unless I'm playing the Tetris demo with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that Tetris demo is kick-ass, though. <laughs> I will never buy that game. It's such a good demo. Well, anyway, uh, we are Workforce Gaming. You can follow us on Twitter at Workforce Gaming. Subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever you're listening, and we will see you later. Bye.